Say what you want about the show, the name's pretty sweet. They're going back to the Citadel! What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking the brand new Russo Brothers produced film that is Citadel on Amazon Prime. The first two episodes dropped this weekend. Let's talk about it. So global spy agency Citadel has fallen and its agents' memories were wiped clean. Now the powerful syndicate Manticore is rising in the void. Can the Citadel agents recollect their past and summon the strength to fight back? This series stars Priyanka Chopra Jonas as Nadia and Richard Madden as Mason, aka Mason Kane, a really cool spy name. And like I said, the Russo brothers are heavily involved in this. You also have some other talented directors involved. Stanley Tucci is in this series and and uh, as of now, I believe the first season is six episodes, and every episode feels very episodic. And what I mean by that is they're always giving us a tease at the end of the first episode, at the end of the second, uh, but then they're building on one plot point that is a part of that tease in the next episode episode and that's kind of cool because on Amazon I feel like we often get less of that so I enjoy that that's the case on Amazon Prime and um, this is a spy series man it's a full-on Mission Impossible-esque spy series with Richard Madden in the role and that's where I'm going to start with the cast because I think that's one of the best aspects of this series that's one of the biggest positives for me is Madden's really good, man. You expect him to work. But the summary tells us that part of this plot is the fact that certain agents don't necessarily remember where they come from. And that's part of his character. That's part of the charm. He's kind of getting back that memory, but he's also remembering how to be Mason. Kane, when he's starting to recollect that memory, Stanley Tucci's character in Bernard is kind of telling him, hey, let's let's try not to be as big of a dick as you were the first time. I don't know that I believe anyone's 100% a dick, man. Priyanka's character in Nadia is also very interesting, but she's mysterious. We don't entirely know her role. We see that sequence at the beginning that's on a train. We'll talk about the really cool aspects of that here in just a second, uh, but we're kind of learning about her, but the more we learn, it feels like the less we actually know, because is this who this character actually is, it's a spy series. I feel like I could keep saying that, but, uh, you know, I think of the Mission Impossible series. I think of James Bond and certain characters we think we know who they are until we find out that, well, we actually didn't know to start with. And I have only seen the first three episodes. That's the only part of this series that Amazon Prime sent out to critics. So I saw those first three and I said... I, there, there's something to her. I don't even fully know yet, but there's something to her that I'm truly fascinated in. And I think the same goes with Stanley Tucci. You think you know his role. Do you actually? I like his charm. Now, there are certain aspects of his character that are a bit awkward and really cliche, right? There's one scene where they're trying to get information out of him. He's sitting, he's not telling him, and he's he, he's being really sarcastic and smart with him. And I'm like, yeah, it's well, that's interesting. We've seen it a thousand times before. And I'm also trying to nail down the tone of Citadel. I, I just don't, um, I don't know what the tone of this series is supposed to be yet. I don't know. Because, you know, there are certain times where everything's supposed to be really serious. Certain characters have families. The, the villainous presence, they know where those families are located. Things get tense. It's like that edge of your seat type of spy madness that I thoroughly enjoy. I'm a sucker for a series like this if they execute properly. But then there are other times where there's a forced attempt to inject a sense of humor in there. And I don't know if that's just a Russo Brothers thing because they have their fingerprints on this. Look, I love their work in the MCU. I love it. I think it's the best work in the MCU. But outside of that, They've carried some of those cliches to where they just don't entirely work because that's not how that project feels like, at least, is supposed to go. And I feel like that's trickling into Citadel as well, right? There are times where you're like, eh, that's not really a time for a joke. But then there are other points where we could have used something to lighten the humor, but they decide to take themselves fully seriously. So I'm like, I, I just don't know if it fully knows. And this is only after three episodes, right? Things could calm down and you could learn a lot more. And honestly, I think episode three is by far the best episode of this series. But for viewers that are watching this show, you're not going to get to that until the following week. So it's like, is it worth watching two episodes just to get to where we're actually starting to build on these characters and learn more about them? That's pretty cliche, right? You have the spy who forgets his past. The Citadel, which is like a step, I don't want to say above the FBI and the CIA, but they're hidden, right? Not a lot of people know that they exist other than a few entities that may be responsible for what we saw in that first episode. But these villains, the Manticore, they're after the X case. Yeah, that's... that's that's what it's actually called. And uh, they want to take over the world and establish this new world order 
classic, you know, satirical type of nonsense that you see in every spy project ever. And to give them a bit more depth, I think would be at this point nice because we just kind of get cliche lines, cliche dialogue, or I'm going to get the information after you, or we're after the rabbit's foot. And that's basically what it is. Uh, but often, you know, when you get a premise like that, there's something that's interesting within that, like a nice twist. Or in Mission Impossible's case, Philip Seymour Hoffman. There's no Philip Seymour Hoffman in this show. No interesting twist on a villain. No uh, really incredible performance on that side of the fence. It's just not really all that interesting after three episodes. Some of the fight sequences are cool, right? The sequence on the train, it reminded me of Bullet Train last year, and there are certain moments within the choreography where I'm kind of feeling John Wick, or I'm kind of feeling uh, the Russo brothers touch, even though I don't think they directed any of these episodes, but I think of something like The Winter Soldier. It didn't fully affect me like some of those fight sequences, but they were interesting, and I think Madden does a nice job, Chopper does a nice job. I do believe the entire cast is working within the confines of what they have, but I just feel like the script at this point is constricting them uh, to fully making this an original show. I'm feeling a lack of originality to this point. And while The Gray Man was a movie that I enjoyed and there were moments that I had fun with, I feel similarly to Citadel, even though I think this has the opportunity to be better than that. Uh, it just feels like at this point, I don't fully know what makes Citadel special and what allows it to stand out as something uh, different. That being said, it's still entertaining, I like action sequences, I like spy stuff, and I like revenge. And you get that here. Before I give you my current score, today's question of the day, what is your favorite Richard Madden performance, and what's your favorite Russo Brothers project outside of the Marvel Universe? Now, like I said, the score isn't finalized, just three episodes, but here are my final thoughts. This premise is elevated by compelling cast and fun action sequences, but Citadel struggles with originality. Regardless, the slow building mystery could pay off in the long run. I like the fact that the most recent episode is the best, but you may have to give it two to three episodes before you know if this show is for you or not. At least that's how I felt. But there is promise. Let's see what happens. And uh, one more question. Should I come back and review the show after all the episodes are out? Thanks so much for watching. Later on, Peter Pan and Wendy. And I'm going to see Guardians of the Galaxy 3 tonight. See you soon.